1A. Okay, why is this clearly an energy problem? We take a look. The sum of the change of energy, energy is always conserved, is equal to zero. We see this is not the situation here. This is gaining energy. And we say, oh, right, change of energy is work put in. I have a force and I have a distance. That's going to be the dot product of force times delta x. And so where does that energy go? That energy goes to kinetic energy. And kinetic energy is one-half mv squared. This is what we want. This is what we have. Now you can go through the other ones and say momentum. Yeah, you could say this is gaining momentum in this direction where I'm pushing and the earth is gaining momentum in the other direction as I push on it with my feet. You could look at dynamics and find the acceleration, but that's not going to give you the velocity because we don't know the time. Because we don't know time, kinematics and dynamics are not going to be helpful to us. So we go with the, the conservation of energy or the work energy theorem. Remember, this is a dot product. The dot product is the magnitudes times the cosine of the included angle. That's cosine, it's the one that's flat on top, and cosine of 60 degrees is one half. And we solve for the velocity, and we get four meters per second. Check, that's Newton meters per kilogram, and that should come to meters squared per second squared, but we got the square root. The reason the energy theorem doesn't work for this is because work is equal to force dot dx. And now I'm giving you the amount of time. So if I give you time and I'm asking for velocity, you're going to use force equals mass times acceleration. Because I give you, because we can find the forces, we know the mass, we can find the acceleration. If we know the acceleration, we can use acceleration as change in velocity over change in time. So if I calculate the acceleration, and I know the amount of time I'm looking for, we can find the change in velocity. So D and E are dynamics problems because I'm giving you forces and I'm asking you for another force, for D, what is the normal force, and for E, I'm asking you for acceleration. So we go through our protocol. We say, oh, this is a dynamics problem. There's no formula for it. But I do know the vector sum of the forces equal mass times acceleration. And I can put all those forces in here. Then I can ask myself a very important question. What's the direction of acceleration? It's in this direction. Okay, so what do I do with that? Well, there's two ways I can solve this. I can do it graphically. I've got my three forces, only three forces on this body. Force of gravity, the tension, and the normal force. And I can say, oh, this is the direction of the acceleration. So the net force must also be in that direction. So these vectors have to add to something that goes straight that way. And so this has been drawn too big. And now I can see that the vector sum of my forces is equal to mass times acceleration. Or I can just say, let's do a component by component. The sum of the forces in the x direction equal mass times acceleration in the x direction. The sum of the forces in the y direction equal mass times acceleration in the y direction. Now, I don't know the acceleration in the x-direction. I want it. But I do know the force, the sum of the forces in the x-direction. Because the only one, the only one of the forces in the x-direction is the x-component of the tension. And so this, the sum of the forces in the x-direction, equal tension cosine theta. Tension is 80 newtons. Cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half. So this is equal to 40 newtons. And I can solve right away because I know the mass is 20 kilograms. And so I divide through and the acceleration in the x direction is 2 meters per second squared. We already knew that from number A because it took us 2 seconds to go from 0 to 4 meters per second. And acceleration is change in velocity over change in time. The acceleration in the y direction is equal to 0. We can just write down all of our forces. In the y direction, we have the force of gravity, we have the tension, and we have the normal force. Remember, we only want the y component of the tension, and so this is going to be tension sine theta. And so we've got mg plus tension sine theta plus the normal force equals the acceleration in the y direction is zero, so this is zero. I made a horrific deletion so far. I haven't looked at sine. 
And we want to call this, I'm going to call this the positive direction. It's a positive y direction. And we call that the positive x direction. And so we look, force of gravity is negative. The vertical tension and the normal force are in the positive direction. So now I can solve the normal force is just equal to mg, how hard gravity is pulling down, minus the amount of tension that I'm pulling up with. This is 200 newtons. This is 80 newtons times the sine of 60. Sine of 60 is 0.87. 80 newtons times 0.87. That's about 70 newtons. 200 newtons minus the 70 newtons I'm pulling up with. Using this method, I get a horizontal acceleration of 2 meters per second squared, which we already knew from A and B because acceleration is just equal to change in velocity over change in time. And we know we went from zero, we went from zero to four meters per second in two seconds. And I get a normal force of about 130 newtons, meaning if you pull this over a, a frictionless scale, that scale would read 130 newtons. Or in fact, they read in kilograms, it would guess that this mass is 13 kilograms and not 20 kilograms because you're pulling up on that rope. Then of course we can use kinematics. Now because we have a time, we pull her for four seconds, and we have an acceleration, we can just say, yeah, acceleration equals change in velocity over change in time, or the increase in velocity is just equal to acceleration times change in time. Right. I'm accelerating at two meters per second squared for four seconds. That's going to be eight meters per second is my final velocity. One F is a kinematics problem because I know the acceleration, I know V naught, I know V final, I also know the amount of time, and I want to find delta x. We could use our knowledge that the displacement change of x is the, is the integral of velocity dt, which is the area underneath the time velocity graph. And so I know what it looks like, it's got a slope of 2 meters per second squared, and I pull for four seconds, and at the end of four seconds, I'm moving at eight meters per second. So this area is four seconds times eight meters per second times one half. Another way to look at it is because this is a straight line, because my acceleration is constant, I can just recognize my average velocity is four meters per second, and I know velocity average is equal to delta x over delta t. 4 meters per second times 4 seconds is 16 meters. For 1g, if I know the acceleration and I know the time, I can find the change in velocity. And I can just add that to the 6 meters per second, so I end up with v final equals 22 meters per second.